Normally, Westchester is an uninviting place to play for the Division I hockey opponents that make the trip here. The Golden Rams have not lost a game in regulation here at Iceline so far this season, but the Liberty Flames are also a very hot road team, and something had to give tonight in the first period. It was Westchester who capitulated. 3-0 is the score. The Flames have the lead, and they've had the run of play inside the Golden Rams zone for the majority of the period. Westchester, though, does have an opportunity here. They have the power play for the next minute and 20 seconds with Nelson in the box. Welcome back here to Iceline, everybody, on Westchester's Hockey Radio Network. It is hockey night here on Friday night. Michael Augsburger alongside our coverage staff. It's great to have you with us tonight for the Golden Rams facing off against the Flames of Liberty. They'll be here again tomorrow night, and we'll be here with you as well. Face-off is dropped at center ice, and Mango wins the draw for the Rams in the home whites, and they skate from left to right as they've changed sides here in the second period. In their own zone, here's Swall with it. He's able to get it up high off the glass into the neutral zone. Westchester still trying to get set up in the Liberty zone on the power play. Now behind the goal, they'll set up shop. 19.30 to play. The shots were 20-5 to in favor of the Flames in the first period. Up ahead, here is Mango. He skates into the zone. He backhands it in behind. Pinnell stops it behind the goal. Off Mango and out to center ice. And Clark skates up with it. He's two on two, shorthanded with 36 seconds left. Bergen fires. Save made. Rebound out in front. Bergen took the shot again, but Michael Rice shut the door on him. 19, 10 left to go in the second period. And the Flames have that 3 nothing lead thanks to Roberts, King, and Hamilton in the first period. 31 seconds left on the Nelson penalty. Face-off to Rice's right. And a face-off is won by the Golden Rams. Here's Opton Aker up ahead. He's got McShane on his left, but it's intercepted by Roberts. Roberts two-on-one with King. Roberts fakes the shot. He passes through the slot, but it's deflected by Downing, and Rice is able to smother it. Never made it to King, who was skating in on the right side. 18 seconds left to play in that power play for the Golden Rams, and they have yet to really get established in the Liberty Zone on the power play. It's their first one of the night. And the music is finally working here at Ice Line. We couldn't play the national anthem, so the first item that we heard tonight was Phil Collins, Invisible Touch. 18.44 left to go in the second period. Here's McShane. He skates in in the slot, and it's deflected away from him up on the near side boards. Into the corner it goes. Liberty with control. D to D behind the goal. Here's King. Near side. He hit hard by Ottenacre. And then he loses control of the puck. And Kruik shank has it behind the goal. He makes a move. And he's up ahead in his own slot across the blue line. And then passes up ahead on the right side. Here's Hamilton, one of the goal scorers tonight. Back behind the goal to Kruik shank. Is able to sidestep one man, but not a second. And then Ottenacre jumps on the puck. Here's Andy Skipper. Behind his goal. He skates up ahead. The penalty's over. 18 minutes flat. Left to go here. It goes under the stick of Sharts. And they call that icing. Even though Sharts could have gotten a stick to it. And so the faceoff will come down inside the Westchester zone. Liberty leads 3-0. Here at Ice Line. Again, the two teams will battle it out again tomorrow. With a 3.45 start. And Liberty will hit on the bus back to Lynchburg afterward. Reynolds keeps it in the zone. Into the corner it goes for Hayes. He drops it off for Steele. They wrap it around near side corner. Steele drops it off. Back behind the goal for the Philadelphian Crane. And then into the corner. Back to Steele. Steele tries to get through two Golden Rams. It's deflected away from him. And then Optin Aker makes a nice move. He gets slashed and then taken down, and a good defensive play made by Hayes. Sharts passes up ahead to Hayes, but it goes past him, and then Andy Skipper will hop on the loose puck. He tries to pass it up ahead, but it's intercepted by Steele, and the shot comes in and saved by Michael Rice on the glove. He covers up with 17-15 left to play 
in the second period. Liberty before Thanksgiving was out at Oakland University, and that's one of the reasons why their away record is so good. They swept Oakland in their two games out there before the holiday. Westchester wins the draw. They get it out of the zone. It goes all the way down, and Fricks has control behind the goal. Here's Garvin behind into the corner. Great pass ahead and a nice touch. On the right side, here's Ryan. He skates in, and it gets away from him. He had a nice backhand opportunity, and now back out in front. Ryan in the slot. He hits the post. Into the corner it goes. Here's Hughes. He takes the shot from the point wide to the right. And... With the rebound, Garvin, he tried to center it, but he couldn't get enough on it. Now behind the goal, and now Cole tries to get it out of the zone. He banks it off the boards, and this should be icing as Liberty is able to get to the puck first. 16.33 to play in the second period. Before that road trip, Liberty was at home to the University of Delaware. That's one of the marquee matchups in this conference, and they split at La Haye, and then Liberty host, uh, went to Davenport University and lost on the road. That's their only road loss of the season at Davenport. Westchester down three to nothing. They're looking to get back into the game and provide another one. Westchester with control now at center ice. Cleary sends it into the near side corner, but the Grams need to make a change. And Pinnell fires it up ahead. It's out of the zone, and Swall collects it at the red line. He skies it into the zone. Nelson now with control in the corner. He passes back behind the goal, and then it wraps all the way around on the far side for Bergen. Bergen gets hit behind his net. And then into the corner, Nelson. And five players looking for control. Here's Mango with it. Mango looking to center. He gets hit hard by Clark. Into the corner now. And then back out into the slot. And then skating here to the near side, half boards. The pass for Bionis, no good. And then Malden Aker shoots. It goes over the bar. The best opportunity so far. Centering pass from Bionis. And then another centering pass goes through Mango. Kept in the zone nicely by Swall. And then Optin Aker fires it in. Back behind. He wraps it around. Far side and here. And Liberty is able to get to it first. Still kept in the zone. Bionis with it. He shoots. Rister, good block and save. Off the glove by Pinnell. He directs it into the near side corner. And then off the boards by King and out to center. All the way down for Rice to play. Long pass ahead for Swall with 15 minutes left in the second. He drops it off for Bionis, but it was Arendt and Thompson hops on it. And now a breakaway here for Harris. Harris is up ahead. He passes up in front. Good save there by Rice. And then behind the goal, he had Hamilton on the left side. And Hamilton wasn't able to get it home. Up the pass ahead, sent into the zone, and then covered up by Pinnell. What an opportunity to make it 4 nothing, and Rice stood his ground. Skating up on the right side, all alone was Owen Harris, and he opted for the backhand pass across the slot. It was probably the right play because Hamilton had a wide open net, but Rice was able to slide over and make life difficult for him. 14-35 to play. And the faceoff inside the Liberty Zone is sent all the way back down for Rice to play. Kept in the zone. Here's Thompson. In the slot, he passes to the far circle. The wrister is up and high into the netting behind the goal. And with 14.22 left in the second, we have a faceoff inside. Now it'll come outside the Westchester Zone. We'll see if it was deflected or not. Looks like they'll set up in the far circle. Cream takes the draw for Liberty against Wingett, and Wingett wins the draw. Westchester is able to get it out of the zone, and a hopping defenseman on the far side is able to knock it down at center, but Liberty is offside as they try to regain the zone. 14-13 left in the second period. Still the three goals for Liberty. Westchester looking for their first. Crane wins the draw just outside the blue line. He gets it back to Schartz. Fires it rink wide, back to his defenseman, and now back to Schartz. Up ahead, Schartz get hit hard into the boards, and into the far corner it goes. Rice tries to play, but it bounced over his stick into the near corner, and then Crane behind the goal. It's deflected away from him. Here's Steele behind the net with Winget and Andy Sticker, Skipper with him there. 
They try to pass it up ahead for Jean-Louis to get it out of the zone, but it was intercepted there by Schartz. And then a long pass ahead goes under the stick of a couple players. Icing's waved off as it was touched at the blue line. Schartz behind the goal. Steele tries to get it at center, but Westchester's offside as they regain the zone. 13.30 to play here in the second period at ice line. Westchester has come in with a one and one series against Rutgers. They beat them at home. They did very well to do that and lost the return fixture and Piscataway. Those are their last two games and they happened before Thanksgiving. Here's Roberts. Roberts centers out in front and Garvin just put it wide. He tapped it. It was a good setup there. And then the Rister comes in from the point from Fricks. Threw a lot of traffic and deflected into the far corner. Liberty with a lot of chances. Here's Westchester now. Up the left side. John Mango with a pass in front for Horacek. He stops and he looks in front. Back behind the goal. Here in the corner. Here's Roberts. They were able to get it out of the zone into neutral ice. Sent right back in by Kevin Cleary. And stopped by Pinnell behind the goal. Pass up ahead. And with speed is Garvin. Garvin tries to gain the zone. It's tipped away from him. And Roberts does a fine job of stopping it at the blue line before it entered the zone. But then Liberty's offside anyway when they try to take it back in. Spurning Roberts' effort. 12-32. On the board here at Ice Line, 3 0 Liberty here in this first game of the weekend series between the Golden Rams and the Flames, who sit in third place in the conference according to regular season records. Kruikshank with control of the puck. He gets it out of his own slot up to King at the red line, and he's stopping his tracks. They get it back into the Liberty zone where Bergen hops on the puck. He gets it out to Swall, and Westchester. Controls it in their own zone. Here's Swall behind his net. He's hit by Bergen. Is able to get the pass up ahead to Optenacre, who fires up ahead. But not able to control it. Joseph Gibbs here on the near side. Inside the Westchester zone. Centering pass. And a wraparound opportunity stopped by Michael Rice. Behind the goal is Connor Walsh. Now Andy Skipper. Skipper skates behind the net. Skates into the far corner and drops it off for Bill Swall. He's attacked by two players and has to get rid of it quickly. Pass up ahead for McElroy's intercepted and a long pass through the slot. Shot save made by Rice. Marshall King was the one who fired it from the near side circle. 11-33 on the board at ice line and the score is still 3-0 Liberty. Delaware leads the conference at 16 and 5 with their 36 points. Rhode Island sits in second. And Liberty, this Flames team coached by Kirk Handy in third place so far this season at 11 and 6. They're ranked 16th in the country and then they finally they put another one in. As we were talking about the standings of the conference, Liberty won the draw inside their own zone and it's going to be Harris who's given the goal for the Flames with 11.25 left to go here in the second period. It's 4 nothing and quickly becoming out of reach for the Golden Rams. Harris is the one who scored, and he takes the draw and wins it. Thompson gets to it first after the win by his, fit, his uh, teammate, and it sends it into the zone. Westchester clears it, and then here's Jean-Louis up the left side. The Flames team probably looks totally different from the one that Westchester faced in the first couple of games. They were able to score five goals in the two games in Lynchburg tonight at home, where they've played so well this season, they haven't been able to generate much scoring opportunity, and they haven't been able to score yet. Here's Hamilton across the blue line, passes behind him to Schartz, who tries to saucer it on the backhand behind him, and no one was there to get it. Big hit at center ice. And now here's a two-on-one for Westchester. Here's Leo Flick. Tries to center it. And a sliding play as Leo Flick was taken out after he lost possession of the puck. No penalty called. Near side corner. Here's Thompson. Thompson gets it up to Hamilton. 
and Hamilton with a foot race with Bill Swall into the zone. Swall's able to get to it, and then Schwartz in his own goal. Here's Cleary. Cleary centers the pass. A great diving play made by Crilly to knock it away from Westchester, but they still have control. Here's Horacek behind the goal. Centers it. Mango shot deflected, and then Horacek has it at his skates. Best opportunity so far for Westchester. Swall now at the point. Gets it to Optenacre. He passes it up, but it's intercepted by Liberty and back out of the zone. At center, Optenacre is able to stop it and fire it in on the netminder for Liberty. And up ahead and offside is Ryan for the Flames. 9.39 left to go in the second period. The score here at Ice Line, Liberty 4, Westchester nothing. Four different Flames have scored tonight. And their leading scorer, Grant Garvin, has 13 goals. The scorer with the most goals tonight is Owen Harris, who has nine on the season. Faceoff to be dropped to the left of Pinnell. And the Flames win the draw. They get to it first in the corner. Here's Hughes. Hughes sends it up ahead. And now Roberts. Near side. The pass goes off his skate, and Fricks has to pick it up and just try to dump it in the zone. They get it down deep, but Westchester has control, as Andy Skipper has it now. Skipper's pass over to the far side, and then a good breakout pass here to McShane. It's poked away from him. Good defensive play by, by Fricks. And into the corner. And then Westchester's in the midst of a change, and skating up with speeds Ryan. Ryan's got Roberts in the center. He takes the shot instead. And it was a sharp angle, and Rice did well to shut the door. 8.59 left in the second period. Face off to be dropped to the left of Michael Rice. Face off one by Clark. Back out to the point for Nelson, who takes the wrister, and it's blocked in the slot and taken down Bergen before he could do much with the puck. Jean-Louis here, hit hard by Clark on the near side, but he's able to dump it in first. Kruikshank has control in the near side corner. King goes under his stick on the long breakout pass, and at center, Westchester picks it up and skates in their own zone. Here's Bill Swall. Swall passes up ahead. Leo Flick harassed by one of the Flames. It's Clark. And eventually he has to cough up the puck. And then Clark finds himself alone on the far side. Bergen shoots. Saved by Rice as he lets it hit his golden ram on his chest. And with 8.21 left to go in the second period, we'll have another faceoff inside the Westchester zone. 4-0 the score. Liberty on top. And they've made no doubt so far. The four golden rams who are hurt, it's Laughlin, Valerio, Samiti and Tyler Wingett. Wingett's the one who hurt his shoulder against Stony Brook and is unable to play tonight. We were worried about Horacek for a moment prior to the opening faceoff, but he's been out there all night and has been one of the better players so far for the Rams. Near side corner it comes. And then a long pass over to the far side. Here's Mango. It intercepts the pass. Errant. And the shot comes in. Save made and then tapped ahead. And the Flames take exception to that as Schartz goes up and tries to defend his defender or his uh, goaltender. As the shot came in on the far side and Horacek tapped at the goaltender and the Flames express their displeasure with that. 7.53 left in the second period. Crane will take the draw against Mango, who is the one who shot that. Gage Downing keeps it in the zone. Bionis picks it up behind the goal. Centering pass to Mango. And then back out in front. Horacek shoots. And the save is made there by Pinnell. It sounded like it might have hit the side netting. And Pinnell quickly covers up. To force another draw here with 7.52 left. Westchester finally getting some opportunities to score. We've seen some of their better chances. Two of their best chances just occurred in the last minute here of the second period. Flames win the draw inside their own zone. They're in the away blues. They also have the away reds. Hamilton with control and he loses it at the near side circle. Westchester tries to clear it and then it's up for Thompson to play off his, his uh, glove 
and he passes out to Krilly. Krilly fires in the wrister from the point, deflected wide of the net, and now behind the goal, out to the far side, half boards. Harris watches Westchester try to play it out of the zone. It's gloved down by Fricks, and Fricks keeps it in the zone again against McElroy. Finally, Westchester's able to clear it at center ice, and they tag up quickly. Thompson's after the puck on the four check on the far side. Seven minutes to go in the second period. 4 nothing Liberty. Up ahead, Optin Aker on the near side. And he just coughs up the puck. Here's Jean-Louis now with a good four check on Crilly. Thompson defending him now in the near side corner. Here's Jean-Louis. Back to Kevin Cleary. And Thompson into the near corner. Fricks against Winget. And then Leo Flick comes in. And on the far side, Liberty skates up ice into the neutral zone. And then a long pass ahead for Thompson. Thompson shoots. Pad save made. Rebound again. Bryce stops the second shot that came in from Garvin with 6.33 left to go in the second period. 4 nothing is the score. Liberty still on top and well in charge of this contest. Face off to Rice's right. And Westchester wins the draw. It's winging on the victory there. They slap it out of the zone along the boards and the far side corner. It comes out the center where Liberty takes control of the puck. Roberts has it on the half boards. Optinaker defending him. He gets his stick caught up in his own man, but eventually takes control of the puck. Skates it up ice, across, and the shot comes in. A good save there made by Pinnell. And then Liberty with a three on two, a four on two. Here's the shot. Nope, it's sent across the slot by Ryan, and it's just behind his man on the far side. Now behind the goal, Liberty with control. They have it here. Garvin, who's pinned up against the boards by Swall, and then skating up out of the corner is Roberts. Roberts gets hit from behind by Jean-Louis. No penalty there. And here's Swall up ice. Swall loses out to Reynolds. Swall pushes Reynolds to the ice. And then against Ryan, he pins him up against the boards. Swall with another hit. Huge hit there. And then Mango with it behind the goal. Here's the pass in front by Horacek. He was looking for Mango. And Pinnell covers it up with 5.33 left to go in the second period. Both teams will make a change. Liberty located in Lynchburg, Virginia. One of the largest Christian colleges and most influential nationally on that level. And they have the big lead here. Influential in this game. Krumikshank behind the goal. Here's King. It goes under his stick. And that was just a lapse in concentration as it's picked up there by Andy. Uh, I'm sorry, by Andy Skipper. And now at center ice, Horacek. Left-handed, sends it in behind the goal. Pinnell stops it. Chips it into the corner where Kruikshank fights against Bionis. And then a, long, uh, a pass up ahead here for Bergen. And a great diving play to knock it out of the zone. Bergen is responsible for that. Hustle play. Gaze down and gets to it first. Here's Bionis. And makes a move on Bergen. Bergen all over the ice right now. 4.47 left to go. Bergen gets it out to Kruikshank. At the point, skates to the circle, passes out in front of the slot. Clark is there. He's hit from behind. And then out in front is still loose. And Bergen watches it go past him at the circle. Kruikshank keeps it in the zone. Bionis defending him. And now Bergen in the slot. He shoots. Glove save. Michael Rice with 4.28 left to play in the second period. Bergen with a great shift for Liberty. With a diving play here in his own slot to knock the puck out of the zone, and then he four-checked like a man on a mission and was the one who ended up with that shot on which Rice had to make a low glove save and make it look good. Crane has it on the near side corner, and then skating with it out here, Liberty, Fricks, long pass along the blue line to Hughes out in front. The shot goes wide to the net. And Westchester has it here, near side. Mickey McShane hit hard, fricks in the near side corner. Joseph Gibbs meets him there, inside the Liberty zone. And now skating up out with it is Crane. Hayes with it. He gets past Austin Aker. Hayes with a shot. Rister save by Michael Rice. Rebound directed into the corner. And then back out for Hughes over the bar. And the rebound is all the way out into center ice. Frick gets to it first. McShane passes it up ahead, and that was a little bit too quick for him. 
he had a little bit more time than he realized. 3.35 left to go. McShane gave up the puck, and it's into the near side corner. Referee has his arm raised. We have a delayed penalty called. Westchester will go on the power play, and the long pass ahead intercepted by Fricks to force the whistle. We'll see who's going to the box and for what. 3.24 left. High stick is the call, and Mr. Hayes is the flame who will sit for two minutes. So, Westchester, if they needed an opportunity to get back into the match, they're down four goals. This is the opportunity here. Face-off inside the Liberty Zone, won by the Rams. Cleary with the puck. Their second power play of the game. They're 0 for 1 so far. Cleary with the shot. Pad save by Pinnell. The rebound was loose for a second. But Kruikshank intercepted the pass from Swall. And now it's 2 on 2. Kruikshank with Crane in support. He skates in on Rice. And now Westchester can catch them off guard if they can hustle down the ice. Long play ahead. It won't be icing as it ever makes it to the red line. Curley picks it up and ships it the length of the ice. 2.50 to go with 1.26 left in the penalty. Westchester with a 5-on-4 for the second time tonight. Bergen defending him incredibly well, maybe with a hold, but not according to the referee. Here's behind the goal. Pinnell stops it there. It's kept in the zone nicely by Cleary. Behind the goal, Horacek. Passed into the far corner. Back to Horacek behind the net. He loses it in his skates, and then it's backhanded out to Swall at the point. Swall looking for a pass. He finds somebody in the corner. It's Mango who tips it to Horacek, and then Krilly winds up, and it deflects off Bionis' skate and into the netting behind the goal. We'll see where the faceoff is dropped. 46 seconds left on the penalty. Westchester looking for their first real opportunity on the power play tonight. Pinnell was forced to make one save earlier on the shot from the point through a little bit of traffic. Again, face-off won by Wingett. Downing passes to Jean-Louis. Long pass across the slot. Optenacre shoots, deflected in front, and Pinnell makes the save. 2-0-2 remaining in the second period. Liberty still with a 4-0 lead and 39 seconds left to kill on this Hayes high-sticking penalty. Face-off to the right of Pinnell. Face-off won by Liberty, and the clearance opportunity goes off the uh, face-off takers, and eventually the Flames, on the second attempt, are able to FedEx it all the way down to Michael Rice. Skating up ice with it now is Gage Downing with a left-handed stick, sends it in, Leo Flick into the slot, Hamilton's there to pounce on the loose puck, and he bounces it off the referee's crease boards and into the Westchester zone. Ten seconds left. Rice comes out of his net to play it. Passes up to Optenacre. And Optenacre's only got four seconds left on the power play. Out of the box comes Hayes. Immediately into his bench. And here's Leo Flick. Flick sends it in on goal. Pinnell watches it go wide. Optenacre picks up the rebound. Back behind the goal. And then Garvin. Garvin with a pass up ahead to King. And a good defensive play by Leo Flick. Otherwise, it would have been a two-on-none. Optenacre trying to forecheck on the Flames here. But a good defensive play. And Roberts will skate up with it. Bionis can't keep it in the zone. But he keeps it at the blue line. And then eventually Ryan takes the, the loose puck. And passes up to Roberts. Roberts with a good saucer pass up on the far side. And the shot coming in from Garvin is saved by Rice. 42.3 left to go here in the second period. 4-0 Liberty. They scored three in the first, and the fourth belongs to Harris here in the second period. Face off to Rice's left. Mango wins the draw, and Westchester's able to get it high off the boards and out of the zone. Into the Liberty zone, all the way down in the far corner. Westchester keeps it in. A good save and a good pad save there that made by Pinnell on the shot from the point. Behind the goal it goes. Players fight for it there. Here's Mango. Mango passes out, and we have a stoppage in play as I don't think the Westchester players knew that the 
play was over, and so we have a, a number of players here exchanging blows as they weren't happy that the shot was taken on Pinnell. And this is where emotions carry over. Harris and Mango are fighting full-fledgedly here at the blue line. 4 nothing is the score. 20.7 left to go in the second period. Gage Downing is fighting against his counterpart there for the Liberty Flames. It looks like Fricks who's going to the box. His helmet's off. What happened here was the net is off its moorings and Westchester had one of their best opportunities to take a shot on goal. They've been, they've been rare so far tonight and the whistle was blown. I don't think Westchester took kindly to the fact that the net was so gingerly dislodged right before they had a scoring opportunity and so they took the shot anyway Either that or they just didn't hear that the whistle was blown. And Liberty, of course, with the shot coming in so late after the whistle, are quick to defend their goaltender. And the punches came in fast and furious. So a number of penalties to sort out here. And we'll see if we can make sense of it all in the closing seconds of the second period. 4 nothing is the score. Liberty has the large lead. There are two Golden Rams in the box. I'm sure Downing is one of them. Also, John Mango, I would imagine, he was fighting. Fricks was the one engaged with Downing. And we'll see, as the captains are just as curious to know what the referee's decisions will be, as Hughes is out there waiting for the uh, first news from the head official. So, 10.45 here in the East on the Westchester Hockey Radio Network. Liberty scored three goals in the first period. They scored the fourth in the second here with Harris's goal. And now the officials have a report to give to the two captains, Bill Swall and Hughes of Liberty. It looks like we'll have concurrent penalties. Kevin Cleary has two minutes on the board, and we'll sort things out as soon as we know exactly what's happening. Liberty, if you're a high school senior, seems to be one of the more alluring places to go play club hockey in the country. Their La Haye Ice Arena just renovated and seats about 4,000 people. They have full television coverage of the home games and they have traveled uh, with a large coterie here um, a number of video officials and stats officials as well as a large coaching staff and um, a number of, of visiting fans here at Iceline more than we normally see uh, especially for such a long trip from Virginia So, with Cleary in the box with two minutes, Westchester has four skaters on the ice against the Flames five. And there are two players from each team in the box for fighting. And I'm sure they will be there a lot longer uh, than Cleary will be. 20 seconds left, and now 12 seconds left here. The shot comes in. Nelson fired the wrister, and now, of course, Tempers are going to flare in front of the net as Michael Rice covers up. This is like the end of an NBA game at the moment with all the stoppages in the last couple of seconds here. 144 left to go on the Cleary penalty. Nine seconds left in the second period. Face off to Rice's right. Liberty looking to get something off the draw quick. Here's Sharts. Passes to the far side. Nelson passes here into the slot. Ryan with a shot deflected up into the netting. It looked like it went off Garvin or one of the Golden Rams in front of the goal. 1.7 seconds left. And if anything's going to happen here, it will have to be quick off a win from Harris. Owen Harris to take the draw against Jean-Louis.
Westchester wins the draw, and they get it out the center, and the horn sounds on the second period. Liberty with a 4 nothing lead with three goals in the first and one goal here in the second. The total shots, 39-14 to 14 in favor of Liberty in that second period. It was 19-9. to 9. Westchester had a couple more shots than they did in the first period. Again, the score as we head to the second intermission here on the Westchester Hockey Radio Network. 4-0, Liberty on top. 